In this video, I'll show you how to get GSEP loaded using modules. The first step is to install GSEP. In your project's directory, say npm install GSEP. If you're using npm, or if you're using yarn, you can say yarn add GSEP instead. This will download and install GSEP to your project. Once it's loaded, open up the file that you want to use GSEP in. For this demo, I'm using React, but you could be using anything that uses JavaScript modules. Here I have a React component that renders a header. The goal is to animate the text color of this header. If I run the project as it is now, you get this, a header without any animation. In most modern build tools, you can import GSEP by saying import GSEP from GSEP. That's it. Now our file can leverage all the animation superpowers of GSAP. For example, I can create a new tween using the .to method by saying gsap.2 header.current and giving it a value. So I'm going to say color hc0, because that's a very green side green, and then duration 2. Now our text color animates. If gsap is failing to import, you might need to use the umd slash commonjs version instead. To do that, open up your browser and go to greensock.com slash install, or click the Get GSEP Now button on the Greensock homepage. This will open up the GSEP installation page. This page shows the many ways to get GSEP. Now scroll down to the Install Helper. This is where you can select any plugins and extra eases that you would like to use in your project, and it will create the code that you can copy and paste to include GSEP in your project. Here you'll see three tabs, CDN, Module slash NPM, and CodePen. For this video, we just need the module slash npm tab, but I cover the others in another video. Once you've clicked the module slash npm tab, you'll see two options, ES modules and umd slash commonjs. If loading gsap the way we showed you earlier on in the video didn't work out for you, try using the umd format instead and see if that works. You can also click the use require syntax checkbox and try that format as well. Below that, you'll see some of the code that we've already written. That code section will update each time you click on one of the checkboxes above. For example, if I click on Morph SVG, then you'll see it update. All of these club plugins in the middle column are only available to Club Greensock members, so they're not included in the standard npm install or everyone's zip download. The only way you can get them is to download them from the Greensock website, as I'll show you in a moment. Keep that in mind when you're trying to import them. Once you've selected the type of the import and all the tools that you want to include in your project, press the Copy Code button. You can then paste it into your project wherever necessary. Here I have the same component but with an added SVG and a couple of paths in it along with references to them. Let's say that we also need to load a Club Greensock plugin, Morph SVG, to morph one path into the shape of the other. To do that, go back to the GSAP installation page. We could click the Download GSAP button here, but it's best to log in first because doing so will change the download zip that you'll get. If you're logged in, the file that is downloaded when you click the Download GSEP button will include the members-only files associated with your account, like Morph SVG plugin, Motion Path Helper, etc. Even if you're not a Club Greensock member, if you create a free Greensock account, you get a special zip that contains custom ease. Now let's click the Download GSEP button. Once we unzip the files, we see something like this. If this looks confusing, don't worry. Each directory contains the exact same GSEP, just packaged differently to fit various workflows. I explain all these options in a separate video, but for now let's focus on this npm install this folder. The only file inside of this folder is the .tgz file. Yours may be named differently depending on which level of membership that you have. This file contains all gsap files including any club plugins that you have access to. You should copy this file and paste it into your project's directory. Then go back to your project's directory in the command line and install the .tgz file, meaning npm install dot slash gsep dot bonus dot tgz. With yarn it'd be yarn add dot slash gsep bonus dot tgz. This will install gsep with all the plugins. Let's take a quick look at what this did. If we go to our modules directory and we type gs to go to gsep and we open it up, we can see that not only the publicly available files are there, but also all of those that we have access to, including club plugins. Additionally, if you open up your package.json file, you can see that the dependency for gsap has been changed to the tgz file. You can leave the tgz file in your project's directory so that it's easily portable as long as you only share the project with anyone else who is covered by your club greensock license. If you share it publicly, you should delete the tgz file. Now we just need to import and register our Morph SVG, so I'll paste in some code copied from the install helper. The reason we need to register all plugins that we add is because tree shaking can sometimes remove the plugins when we build for production if we don't register them. 
Now I have GSAP and Morph SVG loaded and we're ready to start morphing. So here I can create a new tween and say gsap.2, this time targeting our circle.current, and then giving it a target morph SVG value of our star.current, giving it a duration, same as before. Now our circle will morph from being a circle into a star. Cool. That's it for this video. To learn more about using GSAP, check out greensock.com slash learning. If you're having trouble with your project, you can post in our forums at greensock.com slash forums.